Hey, good Monday evening, everyone. It's time for Weather for Weather Geeks, my uh, daily, really in-depth weather video that uh, goes online usually each evening between 7.30 and 8. Take a deep dive into the weather here over the next uh, several days. First thing we're going to do is review what happened uh, over the last couple of days. The Lake Effect machine got cranking uh, yesterday, particularly into last night, and uh, parts of southwest New York have a well, pretty solid half a foot to 10 inches of snow on the ground. Now, the lake effect underachieved uh, somewhat across northeast Ohio last night. We thought there would be a pretty big band that would dive down into our viewing area and, depending on where it wiggled, would give some places maybe two, three, four inches of snow. Most places didn't see much more than an inch, really, out of this. So, uh, you know, up in the snow belts, certainly they've, they've got a decent snowpack. But in our viewing area, uh, most places have less than two inches or even less than an inch of snow, and a lot of that did even melt today because the sun was out for a lot of the afternoon. Now our attention turns towards the cold. That's going to be the story for the uh, next 24 hours. Uh, here at uh, 7.06 p.m., already down to 15 in Youngstown, 17 in Pittsburgh. They're looking at single digits already in the higher terrain of northern PA, south, southern New York, 5, Watertown, New York, 7 in Albany. This is a true Arctic air mass uh, blowing across the Great Lakes and the Northeast this evening. I think a lot of us will uh, end up in the single digits by the end of the night tonight. Here's our uh, in-house futurecast model showing uh, daybreak temperatures tomorrow. These tend to be tend to run a little warm, and I think that's the case tomorrow morning. I think there'll be 8, 9 degrees showing up on a lot of backyard thermometers in the morning instead of 12 to 13. No matter which way you slice it, it's cold, and easily the coldest morning we've had since last March. It's been almost 10 months since we've had a morning quite this cold. Tomorrow, uh, bright and sunny, but temperatures will struggle no better than the upper 20s for our uh, Tuesday afternoon. Well, as we go through time, high pressure will build across the region, and uh, this will give us a couple of decent days coming up uh, midweek. Tomorrow, sunny. Wednesday and Thursday also looking high and dry. Here, we'll skip all the way ahead to Thursday. It's really going to take until uh, Friday before this system tracks east. The same warm front will probably bring rain our way on Friday, and then a cold front will try to drag through over the weekend with uh, another round of, of showers a possibility. Not much rain here over the next uh, few days, but boy, they're going to get socked out west. Uh, you know, El Nino winters tend to be very rainy, particularly from midwinter on in California, parts of the desert southwest. And just in the next 48 hours, some coastal sections of California are going to get two, three inches of rain. Uh, and this will be snow up here in the Sierras. And uh, quite a bit of rain out in the deserts as well. You know, they really need the rain, but it's it's too much at one time a lot of times, unfortunately, out there in parts of the west. They're going to get a lot more beyond 48 hours, too. A uh, very unsettled pattern for them. All right, as far as our look at the longer range, again, we're quiet through Thursday. Here's Friday, a uh, warm front, pushing across uh, parts of the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley. This will spread showers our way. It'll be warm enough for rain. No snow on Friday. And as we go into the weekend, here's a look at Saturday. We have low pressure uh, across Michigan, cold front back here, warm front up here. Saturday's probably not as wet as Friday, but there could be a shower at just about any point on Saturday. Then things start to get a little bit interesting on the modeling as we go into the second half of the uh, weekend. We're going to probably see an area of low pressure forming along the cold front down here and tracking like this somewhere. Now, if it goes too far east, no worries for us. Uh, if it comes far enough west, though, while it might initially be rain, there is a possibility that if the GFS were to be exactly right with this, with this low pressure track, there might be some back-end snow on this uh, Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening. Now we're six days out, so this is all speculation. But that's our next chance to get maybe enough snow to shovel. Uh, we haven't really had much of that, of course, at all this year. And Sunday's the day I'm going to have to keep my eye on because of what the GFS is showing. I will tell you that the European model uh, has no such snow. It just has rain and then ending on Sunday. So something to keep an eye on for Sunday into Sunday night is the possibility of some snow as the Arctic air plows in. Boy, it's going to be cold next week. Uh, here's Monday. Got a northwest flow blowing across the Great Lakes. There'll be some lake effect, no doubt. The lakes will still be wide open for business. There's hardly any ice on the lakes. Uh, and with Arctic air blowing over those lakes, the snow belts will do pretty well. And uh, yeah, it looks just pretty cold next week. No records or anything, just a good-looking January cold outbreak. Uh, really won't be a huge deal. It'll just be certainly a little different than the kind of weather we've had lately. Uh, here's our uh, future cast model showing us uh, nothing as far as the snow, and that's because the graphic just updated, or it's in between runs. So, well, this would show you if it had the previous run on it. Uh, the possibility, at least on the GFS, 
that we get a few inches of snow Sunday into Sunday night. Again, that's a big question mark, something to keep an eye on over the next few days. All right, as far as next week, uh, we're finally going to start to see some true Arctic air sticking around for more than just a day or two, which is what we have now. This Arctic air comes in, it's it's here today, it's here tonight, it's here tomorrow, and then it's, it's out of here. Um, so next week, I think it'll have a little staying power. The jet stream, as we go into uh, late this week, uh, really nothing exciting here. But as we go into the weekend, into next week, you're going to start to see this kind of a dumbbelling effect of the jet stream up in Canada, and this is going to drive cold air down into the Plain States, into the Midwest, into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, and uh, yeah, it's going to get pretty cold. Uh, so by the middle of next week, uh, our old friend the polar vortex has shifted down into Hudson Bay, and it's going to keep driving the cold air down out of Canada. Notice our uh, lines here are oriented northwest to southeast. That means that's where our air is coming from. You can track it all the way up into the northern territories of Canada. So I think next week's cold outbreak will last more than a couple of days. It might last three, four, even five days. Here's a look at the GFS temperatures. Uh, watch the cold air start dumbbelling down here as we go into, here's Friday evening, and then especially into the weekend, look at the greens coming down into the Midwest. We're going to see some minus teens showing up here. Bismarck, Fargo, International Falls, as we go into uh, Saturday, and here's Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, bitterly cold in the Dakotas and Minnesota. Now, as this comes east, it'll be in modified form. So middle of next week, here's here's Monday. Just tons of cold air in the Midwest, but just yeah, cold, but nothing great here. Nothing remarkable here. Teens, Monday morning. Monday afternoon, we might really struggle to get much better than the mid-20s. Uh, and then some nights in the single digits, sure. Uh, here's a look at uh, next Tuesday morning. Uh, that could be our coldest morning of the week. And we'll stay below average for a lot of the week, even though, again, the, the air mass will have modified some. So we're not going to see the kind of extremes that they're going to be dealing with up here in the Midwest. No single digits below zero seem likely here for next week. As far as the long, long range, uh, I mentioned that this cold has some staying power next week. I think it'll last a few days. A uh, couple of uh, pretty geeky indices here. Uh, this is what we call the North Atlantic Oscillation. When it's negative, that tends to favor... Uh, colder weather in the eastern U.S. The the bar, the green kind of boxes in the middle, that's what I want you to pay most attention to. That's the ensemble mean of this model. Notice as, as we go into the latter portions of the month, kind of on the right-hand side of the graph, it starts trending up towards neutral. Uh, it doesn't go positive, perhaps, quite yet, but it starts trending that way. So that would indicate to me that the cold air starts letting up as we go into uh, the second half of January. Another indice we keep an eye on, this deals with the Pacific Ocean, Eastern Pacific Oscillation. This is also an indice that, when it's negative, tends to favor cold weather in the east. Notice it starts trending up as we go uh, deeper into January. So next week's cold is going to last a few days, maybe even five days. But then beyond that, I'm not real bullish on a lot of uh, remarkable cold for the uh, last ten days or maybe even two weeks of January. I still think January will shake out at the end of the month as being near or even somewhat above average, despite the cold that we have coming next week. That's tonight's weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you right back here tomorrow evening on my weather blog and on WFMJ.com slash weather. Make sure you're following me on social media and following our team as well. Storm Tracker 21, Andrew DiPaolo, Candace Monticelli, Jess Briganti. Make sure you're following everyone. Uh, especially when we have weather on the weekends and I'm not chiming in as often. Uh, Andrew and Candace will keep you up to date. All right, have a great rest of this night. I'll see you here tomorrow.